So let me just share my screen. Uh, well, uh, the presentation itself, I'm going to move back and forth throughout the tools itself. So it's not a slide presentation, of course, but well, let's start moving forward with the presentations itself. So I'm Philip Turketo, lead software architect here in Syncydia. So first, this is my contact and feel free to take a picture on it. Uh, it's going to move forward to my LinkedIn account. And again, feel free to connect with me and share any doubts or anything and any type of discussions. Uh, one, well, the agenda of this presentation is pretty straightforward, okay? So it's a quick introduction on uh, what I'm going to present. Uh, setting the scene here and, well, to, to define everything that I'm going to show for you guys is uh, a quick, overview about the service mesh and where exactly a service mesh will stand. And I'm going to show the work between those two tools and how we can especially uh, increase the level of the observability perspective, uh, working with the service mesh alongside an API gateway in a complex environment within microservices, of course. <clears throat> and I'm going to show a quick demonstration on how the Syncedia platform, the API gateway and the service mesh will help and how we are leveraging uh, the, in this complex environment, of course. So starting everything and starting with some issues here. Okay, so microservices, uh, they are popular. We know that microservice works, they're scalable, so on and so forth. Although we have some issues and only issues, but we have some complex things to address uh, in this distributed world. So with microservice, we have a surface, a broad surface about networking because well, we have multiple services communicating within each other. So we do have problems to standardize our security perspective. So. There are multiple networks, multiple everything, multiple services. How, so how we can actually do a solid net, uh, standard and solid security pattern here. Uh, how we manage our traffic. I mean, deployments everywhere, internal deployments, external deployments. So we do have APIs everywhere. So uh, how, again, how we do a solid strategy to expose the APIs internally and externally for service-to-service -service communication, to our partner communication. So how we can handle the traffic management. Observability perspective is a huge gap uh, if the tooling, it's not quite accurate. So I'm going to show a, a quite good level of observability using the platform, combining the API gateway and the service mesh and service discoverability. So how we can check our service, our services. So what are the microservices that are running? So those are some of the issues and the part of the solution that I'm going to show. Uh, moving forward, so just uh, a quick topology, of course, just to, to, to bring, bring things clear. So we do have our network. We do have our Kubernetes cluster sit on top of this network. Uh, in my demonstration, I'm going to use a cloud provider and the service mesh sitting on top of the Kubernetes cluster. So let's focus on the service mesh itself. And then on top of the service mesh, we do have some request and response services, some REST-based APIs in our case, uh, providing the flow externally and internally. So service-to-service -service communication and some north and south or external communication outside our cluster. So here, uh, it's a quick overview about the demo and our platform itself. So uh, we are going to work in two basic networks. One is the network that the API platform is sitting. So we do have a SaaS platform uh, working in a normal basis. So it's the API platform completely, well, standard uh, architecture. And then we have the second network here, which is 
inside this network, I will have a Kubernetes cluster running. Inside this Kubernetes cluster, we have the, the service mesh and my services running inside the Kubernetes. So uh, some benefits here, OK? Standard security, uh, centralized traffic management, uh, observability patterns well-defined, some network abstractions. Uh, I'm going to show how to do a canary release, for example, how to facilitate the the deployments of the services. And uh, well, we are going to focus on the development, development of the business itself. So we are going to decouple non-functional requirements, especially from the microservices and send them to the service mesh or the API gateway platform, if it, if it makes sense, of course. So this is the overview of the architecture. Uh, about our product and our service mesh, okay? So uh, we do have a Kubernetes cluster and inside this Kubernetes cluster, we do have an Istio running. So we are sitting on top of Istio and codes for on top of Istio, we are using Istio interfaces and information uh, to actually bring an abstraction. So we do have our own way to do releases, scanner releases, uh, the observability patterns, so on and so forth. Although we are using Istio capabilities to provide those capabilities. So the service mesh itself is Istio, but our product is an abstraction on top of Istio to accelerate, facilitate, and centralize some aspects of the observability perspective inside a complex cluster, of course. So this is the, the general overview of our product, of course. Uh, this is the topology and the architecture for the demo. Okay, uh, I do have three microservices running with multiple pods. Uh, the first one, the account service, will be exposed throughout the north and south configuration. So I will have an API exposed to external world. Uh, accounting service will call customers and payment service. And each and every service is working independently. Of course, they're calling each other via REST basis at this demo. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. And like I said, we are using Kubernetes, Istio, the Syncedia service mesh, and uh, Syncedia API platform running in well, the, the Kubernetes, Istio, and the service mesh running on the first network. And the Syncedia API platform is running a completely separate network in a SaaS based. Oh, sorry about that, it's too early, not question yet. So let's go to the demo itself. So like I said, I'm going to keep uh, scrolling back and forth on different tooling, okay? So I'm just going to uh, situation to uh, present to you guys the product itself. So first product here, this is the Syncedia service mesh. So uh, what we are looking for here, what we are looking at actually is the, uh, what we are calling meshes are the namespaces that are based on a Kubernetes cluster in a cloud provider. And well, this is the Kubernetes cluster and I'm showing you all the pods running in the cluster. Uh, the first and the only configuration that I need to actually do to see a namespace in this menu, it's uh, enabling the Istio injection of the sidecar and UI sidecar for the namespace itself. So for this configuration, I do have the bats namespace, demo tests, Syncedia Bank, and Suck Shop. So all those uh, namespaces are configured to enabling the Istio injection. So our demo will be presented on the Syncedia Bank namespace. So let's focus on this guy. But uh, at this first screen, as you can see, we can already have some idea of the healthy of my entire cluster, for example. So all my namespaces are healthy. I know exactly the amount of pods that are uh, in place. And in this case, we do have all those namespaces or meshes provisioned and uh, they are actually being controlled by Istio and Syncedia service mesh in this case. So focusing on the Syncedia bank, uh, we do have some interesting configurations here. And well, we do have a capability to provide a quick description about the namespace itself and host here. This is a strategy to uh, actually access 
the services inside the cluster in an external way. So I'm just configuring external load balancing here as a header host to be able to access my service externally. And one interesting configuration here, I'm using the TLS configuration for everything. So uh, at this point, I'm trying to achieve the no worry safe security pattern. So even inside my own cluster communication, I'm going to use TLS encryption for every single call. So I'm using HTTPS with TLS encryption. Uh, I do have a secret in place already. So the only configuration that I need to leverage is a inside Kubernetes that will contain my certificates and keys for my TLS uh, encryption. And this is what I have at this, this secret, okay? So I'm not entering too much details because of the time, but we can discuss this offline. Uh, essentially, this configuration is enabling TLS uh, for my ingress controller, which means every external call to my cluster is going to use TLS encryption. And every call that I made inside my cluster, even service to service communication is already encrypted with TLS also. So this is the first configuration that we can make inside the namespace. Uh, moving forward in the product, uh, we can see inside a specifically namespace, this is the service abstraction uh, in the Kubernetes world. So I can see every single service deployed. And like our uh, demonstration here, we do have those three services, account, customers, and payments. So as you can see, I have those three services running, uh, accounting with two pods, customers, two pods, and service with four pods. And the first integration here, uh, we do have an integration capability with our API gateway that I mentioned. So the API account service is exposing their capabilities, their APIs in external basis. So north and south uh, traffic. If you guys click on the left side of this menu, it's going to, let me just log in, sorry about that. PCI compliant. So. If I just click here, it's going to redirect me directly to my exposed API in the API platform. So this is the other tool. This is the CCD API platform. And well, this is the exposed API for external world. And like I said, uh, OAuth capabilities, uh, the observability from the API perspective, the DDoS attacks, injection attacks, we can address inside the API gateway perspective. And my cluster will only talk with my API gateway, providing the security capabilities on top of it, of course. So this is the API exposed. And one very important thing here, uh, we do have an online plugin to provide real-time suggestions on top of the API itself. So interface completeness here is making me some suggestions to increase the maturity level of my API. And it's possible to create some workflows here to establish, oh, APIs with less than 70% of interface completeness, I am not able to deploy this API in, determine, uh, in a specific environment, for example. So this is my exposed API. Of course, uh, I can import an open API specification here to present everything. Of course, I'm not doing this by hand. <laughs> Uh, this API is deployed on the production environment, and this is the link for the production environment. Those are the resources uh, exposed. So dash account, dash balances, accounts by ID, and statements. And the flows that I'm able to uh, put the configurations in a drag and drop fashion. I mean, if I need a specific wall flow, I can just drag and drop the wall flow that I want, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the, the general explanation of the CCD gateway. And of course, uh, I have a external guy uh, calling this API. So I can actually see the tracing of the API online. So the latency, the uh, what is the call, what is the result, everything, so on and so forth. So we're going to explore this a little bit later, but this is the general view of those two tools working together. 
So back to our service mesh, okay? So this is the integration that we have. So, and this is the services that we have inside our Kubernetes cluster. So let's take a look on the Kubernetes. So at the namespace in Cydia Bank, we do have the pods that I mentioned, two pods for accounting, two pods for services, and four pods for payments. So this is the visualization that we have here. And if we move forward, uh, we can see more details uh, from the pod perspective. So the pod is health or not, the creation of the pod. The source, so the source here means where the data is coming from. Uh, in our case, it's coming from Istio Ingress Gateway because this service is exposing uh, north and south flow. So the, the flow of the APIs itself is coming from an external world, external tool, in our case, from API Gateway. Some built-in metrics is starting to centralize our observability patterns. So we do have, so let me just uh, start my, sorry about that. Let me just start in the request for the services and uh, I'm going to show the metrics moving forward. So we're going back to the metrics a little bit later. So uh, those are the deployments and the traffic management menu. In this case, uh, I have two perspectives from this accounting service. I have the external deployment, which means I'm going to expose uh, an endpoint from the service to the external world, to external load balancing, to external egress gateway. So this is the configuration that I need to make. Uh, the name of the deployment, the ports that the container exports, and this is pretty straightforward. The connection type here is for internal or external deployments. The path that I want to explore, to, to uh, deploy. Uh, this is a, a metadata about the name of the API that I want to explore. And the name is the equals the name that I provide from my API gateway. And this URL is the exactly URL that I have uh, my API configured here. So this is the link between the service and the service mesh deployment and the API exposed in the API gateway. So this is where I'm doing the link. And the destination saying that uh, this traffic is going to flow 100% of the requests to the V1 version, which is the deployment available uh, inside my Kubernetes cluster for the accounting service. So the deployment is made. And now I think we have metrics. Yes, we do have metrics. So uh, this is the online metrics perspective based on Prometheus, of course. Uh, so we do have request volume. So the amount of the request per second, duration of the request, uh, the response size, and the request size of the requests. So uh, we start to centralize the observability with this screen here. Uh, back to our traffic management, we do have another type of deployment, which is the internal deployment. Again, the external deployment will reach our API gateway only. And if external customers want to consume this API, it's going to pass in through API gateway and then reach our services. Although our accounting service is enabled to share its capabilities throughout the internal cluster. So we do have an internal deployment in the same port. The only difference between this deployment and external deployment is the API path. Uh, because well, everything is equal. I'm exposing the dash accounts path on the view one version, and that's it. So in practice, uh, I'm redirecting 100% of the external uh, calls uh, for this deployment or in front of internal deployments are going to redirect for this deployment. And this is the the logic between this this, this screen here. Uh, authentication authorization, let's keep it for, for later, for instance. Uh, let me just show you guys the services itself that are running. So this is the Postman, a tool that I'm using to call the REST APIs. And this is the link from my load balancing perspective, dash accounts. And this is my header host that I configured 
in the first step. Again, I'm using HTTPS, TLS encryption, and this is, well, I'm calling the service for the statement and it's been and here's the result, uh, 200 okay in this case. Uh, this here is because I'm using a self-signed certificate. It's not an official certificate, but it's just for demonstration purposes. The TLS certification certificate in 1.3 version is established between this communication. So of course, uh, in a production way, this direct call, external call will not allowed only via API gateway, but for demo purposes, I'm just calling the service for you guys see the external deployment capability of our service mesh at this point, okay? Uh, moving forward, uh, we do have another service here, a more interesting service. Uh, the payment service, I do have two versions of the service, the normal version with three pods and a V2 version another deployment. So again, we have the same uh, capabilities. In this case, we do only have traffic east and west traffic. So the accounting service is calling the payment service for information in this case. The same metrics and the traffic management is a little bit different. So we do have the external deployment for payment service, but they are not going to use it. Let's keep our attention on the internal deployment. We do have two deployments here. One, it's a general release, meaning 100% uh, of the traffic will be redirected to V1 version of the payment service. Although we do have another deployment here in a canary base, so we can do a can I release throughout our tool using two strategies. Uh, traffic weight, which is our example here, meaning that 25% of the traffic flow will be redirected to the payments V2 version. And we can, uh, we have another option to the deployment, which is header. So we can specify specifically header in the REST API to redirect the flow if an API have a specific header, for example. So this is another strategy to do a canary release. So just keep it simple. So let's see on the graph. And again, another very interesting tooling. So this is the online graph. So what's happening in the cluster right now? So we do have our Istio ingress gateway, which is the external traffic. Moving forward to accounting service. The accounting service, by the way, is spreading the the volume of the request throughout the customer service and the payment service. The payment service, we do have V1 and V2. And if we change our visualization here for request percentage, for example, we have approximately 25% of the requests being forwarded to V2 version. The rest is moving forward to V1 version. Of course, uh, the more traffic that I have, more approximately this number is, okay, it's not precisely 25% is approximately 25% of the requests. Uh, this service DB here is because uh, I do have just one provider, one database provider for those for every microservice in a production world. Of course, we do have one specific database for each and every uh, microservice. I'm not sharing databases, of course. <laughs> uh, again, uh, like I said, uh, we are centralizing observability patterns. So this is another observability tool. So what is happening in my cluster now? What is happening online in my cluster? So how is the flow is going? So as you guys can see, every single line is uh, in a green line. So we do not have any errors. So we're going to simulate later in the demo an error to see uh, what is going on here. Uh, the last capability about observability again is the tracing capability. So uh, if the application is able to export the tracing, or if not, we can configure it throughout the Istio configurations, of course, but uh, we do have a complete tracing uh, of the calls. In this case, uh, we are calling uh, in general, what is the, the amount of time that we are taking in a specific request. So let me just show it again, sorry. 
And how much time we are spending to call the payment service, for example, we can clear the C here. So the accounting service calling the payment service and the payment service took in 60 seconds, 67 milliseconds to respond. So if something goes wrong or something uh, is increasing the latency of the service, the tracing capability is a very interesting one to see what is going on inside the microservice. So who is fault, who is to fault? So uh, which microservice I have the, uh, well, the biggest latency? Okay, so again, centralizing observability. Uh, this is the general view of the tool. So like I said, let me just stop my, uh, my example here. And I, I'm going to add a fault, uh, an API with a little problem here to see how things are going to be. So this is my running behind the scenes. So I do have one call with a success 200 and then one call with a bad request. So let's give some time for the, uh, again, this tool is almost real time, okay? Uh, it took some seconds to, to update, so let's see. So we do have a red line here. So somewhere is in place. Somebody's calling my API in a wrong way or I'm, I'm responding some error. So something's going bad here. So let's see, it's external traffic. Like I said, uh, somebody's calling the external world, my account service in the wrong way, or I'm, I'm responding the wrong way. Uh, how can I investigate it? So since we do have the capability here to integrate our API gateway, so let's check our API from the gateway perspective. This is the API gateway. Uh, let's see the trace. So here's to blame. We do have 400 calls. Of course, uh, possibly in a production environment, it will be 500, some services faulting, going down, back and forth. So the most important part that I want to show here is we can easily see what's going on, even if this, uh, uh, this environment grows. So uh, we can uh, connect things. So we can see who is to blame here. This is the completely complete trace of the the guys to, to grab the guilt. This is the gateway trace. So, oh, I'm calling the account API and getting for a hundred. So you can easily call your partner and check with him. So you're calling my APIs, you're uh, talking for a hundred there, you're calling something wrong, or we are changing our uh, API structure, please update it. So uh, the main point here is, uh, we are able to investigate further. So we can easily see there happening. We can see what is going on. And again, we are combining two tools. So if somebody sees this on the graph, I'm, I'm following my services and something is not quite good, I can see where exactly things are not quite good because, well, the communication between the payment service and customer service is running smoothly, but somebody who is calling my accounting service not calling the, the right way or my accounting service is responding something wrong. So it's easily that I just go to my API gateway capability and see. If I want to investigate further, I have some deep analysis tooling here to show. And of course, this is a Kibana plugin. Uh, let's select our API accounting service here. So I do have a capability to see in the past how many errors that I do have here. So I have client errors here, have some server errors here, and right now I'm starting the, the client errors again. So I want to grab my specific hour. I need to see uh, how much API calls I do have. So we have the entire life cycle since the beginning visible and in an easy way to see how and well, how everything is flowing in a long line fashion. And if I want to grab some metrics from the past, we can easily grab it from the API gateway perspective. So those are the observability capabilities. We passing through kernel releases, releasing a service with V1 and V2, uh, external releases, so on and so forth. Uh, and again, uh, those external calls, I can easily in API gateway again, sorry. 
So let's go back to the, let's just grab the link again from the API. See the bank. Back on the API gateway. We do have some interesting capabilities in our API gateway also to provide some traceability in a governance perspective. So uh, we can do an impact analysis in two ways. Uh, just grab the API here, sorry. Accounting service production. So if I want to see the impact that I'm going to cause from my external user's perspective when changing the accounting API, for example. So this plugin will show uh, everything in terms of the APIs. If you combine this plugin here, I'm showing, oh, I will impact dash accounts, dash account statements, uh, and dash accounts balances. If you combine this with the graph that we do have here, you can see the entire workflow from the microservice perspective exposing an API. So in this visualization, I do have a view of every single operation that I have exposed. And in this perspective, I know every single service that the account API is calling to actually provide the capability for my customer. So I do have a, completely, a complete impact analysis from my backend to the API perspective, everything. So I know exactly what and which capabilities that I'm going to impact if I change something, for example. Uh, of course, uh, at this demo, this the situation that we are studying is pretty simple, but imagine a hundred of thousands of uh, exposed APIs and internal APIs moving uh, with uh, business rules throughout the, the entire cluster, for example. Uh, well, another interesting capability, okay. Uh, we do have a tooling here inside our API gateway, which is an external tool for the API gateway, but is uh, attached, kind of attached, called flexible actions. So if nobody sees it, uh, I'm not aware of those errors. So uh, we do have a capability to alarming. In this case, I do have an alarm in place. Uh, the alarm is saying to me, oh, if I do have a 400 errors over the last one minute, please send to my email an alarm and just grab, I'm just going to grab my email here from the CCD platform to show you guys, here is the alarm. So Flexible actions, please. Your post accounting is receiving far under errors for the last one minute. So we do have a capability, again, out of the box and centralize every observability aspect, including the alarming phase. Oh, to say, hey, something is going on or something wrong is going on uh, with your APIs, please go to check it. And when you're going to check, you can easily see what is going on here in the investigation phase will be pretty smoothly and well, we can easily see things flowing, investigate everything, so on and so forth. And well, the API gateway capability, we also have out of the box security uh, perspectives and security concerns. We do have every OAuth flow that we can easily drag and drop from the API. Uh, it's just a matter of go ahead, just, and choose the specifically OAuth RFC in this case. So I can easily drag and drop the OAuth flow that I want and pretty straightforward, that's it. If I want additional login, again, it's pretty straightforward, drag and drop. Uh, changing headers, in this case, I'm uh, providing the header host in order for my API gateway to call my backend in a proper way, I can do it. I can do transformations. Well, API gateway perspective is pretty complete. It's just drag and drop capabilities, JSON to XML, query params, so on and so forth. Although we do have security capabilities inside our service mesh. So imagine that now I want to uh, export the capability uh, for the payment service. Uh, I do have a way to do the authentication phase here. 
So in my case, I have a key cloak running in the cluster. So it's an open ID tool based on OAuth 2. So I do have every configuration, but let's do this thing in a different way. Every single capability that I showed you guys from the service mesh perspective, I can do throughout Kubernetes cluster directly. So uh, I don't need the front end. The front end is more for observability perspectives and to see the configuration in a more well, uh, user-friendly way. But I can do everything that I did on our service mesh. You can do it throughout our own CRDs, our own uh, version of the API specifically for Kubernetes. Our service mesh is a Kubernetes native application. So everything that I did, we can do, for example, this is uh, YAML uh, for uh, external deployment. Uh, this is a YAML for a internal deployment. And this is the YAML for a Canary release, for example. Like I said, we do have the payments V2, the version is V2, and the weight that I'm going to redirect is 25% of the traffic. And like I said, let's do things in a different way here. I do have this configuration here. So kubectl apply the shaft. So as you guys can see first, of course, uh, the service here inside Sincedia Bank in the payment service, I don't have anything about authentication yet. So let's just apply my YAML file. Uh, we just created, so let's check it again. Payments, authentication, so here we are. We do have an authentication configured. The status is provisioned, and let's see. So I'm doing the security in authentication based uh, for everything with dash payments. So let's see if I do have here, let's grab the payment service. So let's try it out. Well, without the authorization at all. Hmm. Access denied it. And let's grab a token here. This is the token management of the key cloak running the cluster. Uh, let's see. That's it. So again, uh, if it's a desire to authenticate and authorize, even inside the Kubernetes cluster, it's completely possible. And if it's a desire to authenticate uh, all the flow that is going to be exposed from your Kubernetes cluster, it's also possible with out-of-the-box configurations, with no codes involved in their microservice. And we leave the microservice work from the business perspective. So the development will be focused on the business. Uh, other non-functional requirements, some of the security requirements on the observability perspective, uh, we are modeling it to leave it from the platform perspective. So we do have some configurations to do this type of job. So. This is the presentation that I have. Uh, everything, again, uh, there's no slides, no nothing. This is more practical than everything. So let's open up for questions. And let me just hang on a second. Let me just back to my OK. Let me see if I can see the questions in the chat. Well, that's it for my presentation, guys. Feel free to ask any questions uh, if you have any. So that's it. Thank you very much. And again, I'm uh, just going to present these slides from, oh, this is my contact. Uh, please feel free to contact me anytime. We can discuss about service mesh, API gateway services, so on and so forth. And one quick thing here about Syncedia itself. Uh, we are helping our customers throughout all the journey. So we are providing the platform and also we can provide the, provide some professional services to move along with architecture perspectives, so on and so forth. 
So feel free to contact us if there is any doubt, any questions, anything. Thank you very much again. And that's it for my presentation. Let me see if we do have any questions. I don't know if it's my, in, in my correct chat, but. <laughs>